Welcome to this Price a Job tutorial. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Area tool in the new Takeoff module in Price a Job. The Area tool is located here within the Tool panel. It's an easy way to measure floor areas on floor plans or areas of walls and roofs on elevation drawings. So to use it, let's just click on the tool and this opens the Area tool toolbar. So here we have options to draw a rectangular area, a polygon area, we can change the color of our areas, we can set the area to either add to our total areas or subtract from our current areas as a cutout. Here we can input our area manually if we already have that measured. We can input the perimeter, the height, the pitch for sloped areas, adjust the area opacity, set a title, and assign it to a various group. So for this example, let's just zoom in here and we'll choose a rectangular area. So we'll just click in one corner of the kitchen here and then drag down to the opposite corner with our pencil icon and click here. And so now this kitchen area has been added to our flooring group and we have an area of 9.26 meters. In addition, the perimeter has also been calculated for us and this is a total length of 12.2 meters. If we zoom in closer, we can see that an area label has also been generated for us and it's printed right here inside the area we just mapped out. So let's add a few more rooms. We'll pan over here to the shower and we'll click in this corner and drag down to the opposite corner and add that to our flooring. And now we have a new area that's been added with 2.9 square meters and seven meters in perimeter. And we'll do one more area, we'll pan over here to the bedroom and again, click in one far corner and go to the opposite corner and click there. And now this area has been added to our total calculation. If we have any irregular areas, like for example, the water closet, then we could use the polygon shape here. So rather than drawing a rectangle, what we'll do is we'll select one corner and click there, cross over to the next, and we can hold our shift button to ensure that we're snapped to the nearest right angle. So click in this corner, and I'm still holding the shift button, so we'll click in this corner, and across to this corner, and down here to this corner, and across to this corner and back over to this corner and one more corner here there now our tool is still active I can either click on the original point here to finish our shape or I can just click on the escape button and price a job will finish the shape for us and so now we've added this irregular shaped area to our total areas under the flooring group if we want to change the grouping for any of these areas we can do so for example Let's click on the shower and let's remove this from the flooring group and put it in its own category. Maybe this will be a tiled shower. So if we don't see tiling here, we can add it to this group here. Or if we want, we can give the group its own title. So in this case, let's call it mosaic. And now we can see that this area has been removed from flooring and added to a group of its own called mosaic. The flooring group now only has three areas mapped out the bedroom, the water closet and the kitchen. The mosaic has one area is the shower. If we click on this area, we can see the various toolbar settings for that particular area. And to represent that this is a mosaic tile, let's go ahead and give this a different color. We'll change this to red. And if we need to change the height, say for example, if this was a concrete slab, we could change the height of that as well. We can also change the title of this rather than calling this area two, let's call this shower. And now our area is changed from area two to shower. And we'll also see that within the group that this area is now itemized as shower. So here under the flooring group, because we have three areas, it's a good idea to label these so that we can tell what area area number four is. So let's select this area and we'll change the title from area four to WC. And now that's indicated here in our group details and helps us avoid confusion. Let's update these other areas as well. Area three, we'll call bedroom. And area one, we will call kitchen. And now in our group, all of our areas are properly labeled, so it's much more convenient to refer to the areas and perimeters. If we prefer not to have a label, we can simply click on the T icon here to hide the label for that room. If we want the labels, but we find that they're conflicting with the floor plan below, if we zoom in, we'll notice that there's a small dot just above the area label. We can click on that dot to reposition the label wherever we need it to be. 
So let's reposition our various labels so that they're a little bit easier to read. So we'll just click on this room that activates this label and we can move it so it's a little bit easier to read. Now maybe rather than having all just generic flooring, maybe we'd like to add a group of hardwood floors. So let's select the bedroom and we'll adjust its group rather than flooring. We'll move this to hardwood floors. So this creates a new group called hardwood floors. And let's select our color and we'll choose a different color for this one. Now we can see that the flooring group has only two rooms listed to it. And for hardwood floors, we now have the bedroom. To add more rooms to the hardwood floors, let's click the area tool and we'll select rectangular tool. And let's trace out the dining room from this corner to this corner and the living room from this corner to this corner. And we can press escape to exit the area tool. And then we can click on the dining room to adjust our label so it's easier to see. And we'll change the title from area five to dining room. And same thing for the living room. We'll select this area and then move the label so it's easier to read and change the title from area six to living room. And we can see that these were accidentally added to the flooring group. So let's just select living room and move that to hardwood floors. And same thing with dining room. We'll select that and move that from flooring to hardwood floors. Now our hardwood floor group has the bedroom, dining room, and living rooms all added. And we can quickly see the area and perimeters for each area as well as the total. Let's add one more room to the hardwood floors. We'll add the hall this time. And because the hall is an irregular shaped area, we'll use the polygon tool. So let's close our group and select the area tool. This time we'll switch to polygon and we'll make sure that we are in hardwood floor group this time. And our color is good. So let's center this and zoom in a bit more for detail. And for this irregular room, we'll follow the contours of this room very closely. And I'll hold my shift button to make sure that I'm drawing right angle lines. And we'll be sure to observe the cutouts of the doors. Go all the way down. Now for this section here, we do have a curve tool coming to the takeoff module soon. But for now, what we'll do is simply just zoom in very close and draw a series of points around the curve to simulate the curve. And again, I'll hold my shift button to make sure that my lines are at right angles. And I'll zoom out a bit by scrolling the wheel. Look up to the top here. Oh, we have another door cut out. We don't want to miss that. I'm still holding my shift button so that I know that my turns are all right angles. And another door cut out. Okay. Now I can press escape and price and job will automatically finish that last contour for me. Or if we zoom in closer, I can see that if I hover over, there is a pink circle that highlights our first point. If I click on that first point, that will finish our shape for us. And now I'll press escape to exit the area tool. And here's our area label. I will click on this to drag it to a more central spot. And for the title of this one, rather than area seven, I will call this one hall. And now this has been added to our hardwood floor category. Here's the hall here with the total area of all of our hardwood floors. Now, if we have any areas that we need to cut out that we don't want to be included with the total area, say, for example, in the kitchen, there might be an island or maybe in the shower, we'll cut out the area for the shower pan itself so that it's not tiled underneath. For this, what we can do is select our area tool. And for kitchen, let's go back to our flooring category. And we'll choose a rectangular shape. We'll choose a white color for our cutout. And then with our area tool, we can draw the island in the kitchen and click on the opposite corner of the island. 
So it seems a little faint. So let's exit the area tool and we'll select our cutout and then we can adjust the opacity. And then we can move our area label and change our area title. We'll call this one island. And now if we take a look at our flooring group, we can see that an island has been added to our total area, but we don't want this area added to our total area. We want it subtracted. So we'll select that area again and up at the toolbar here, instead of plus, we'll convert that to a subtraction. So now this island area is being turned to red in our group and the area of the island has been deducted from our total area and perimeter. We can also use this cutout tool for elevation plans. So let's scroll over to our exterior elevation and it's an ideal tool for calculating windows and doors. So for example, we can select our area tool and we don't want this added to the flooring group. So we'll just open the groups categories here and we'll find an appropriate area. We'll call this cladding and then we'll set our shape for rectangular and we'll change our color for this one to a different color. We'll choose pink for this one. And then we'll set our cursor here to this corner of the wall and drag it across to the opposite corner. And now we've measured this wall. So here, if we look in our cladding group, we can see the total area of this wall. Now, if we do a cutout, let's change the color of our cutout to white and we'll change the modifier to a subtract. And let's exit our area tool for a moment and select this wall area so that we can adjust its opacity so we can see the door cutout that we need to remove. Now we'll go back to area tool and now we will trace out the door opening here. And there we go. And we can exit our area tool and adjust the opacity of the doors just so we can see behind exactly what it is that we're cutting out. Now, if you look at our cladding group, we can see that we have the total area of the wall at 16.6 .6 square meters minus the cutout of the door at minus 4.9 square meters. And you can use this technique to remove any area that you don't want to calculate for. If we're having trouble seeing the floor plan or elevation drawing underneath our various drawings, we can adjust the opacity of our group or we can close the group and toggle the visibility button so that our changes are visible or invisible. Now, some areas that we need to take off will have a pitch or a slope to them, such as roofs or sloped driveways. Let's use this roof as an example. So we'll select our area tool and we'll be adding an area. So we'll adjust that. And this is an irregular shape. So we'll select the polygon tool and we'll select a group here. We'll add this to a group called pitched roof. And then we can use our cursor to draw out the contours of this roof. So just go across here, down to there, and then to here. And to finish our shape, I can either click on the original starting point or just click escape and price job will finish the line for us. Now let me select this and change the color of this so it stands out a bit more. Let's change this one to a green color. And we can adjust the opacity of that a bit so that we can see beneath it as well. Now, if we take a look at the details of our pitched roof, of primary concern are the area and perimeter. So this pitched roof currently has an area of 12.2 square meters and a total perimeter of 16.7 meters. Since this roof is pitched, we must adjust the pitch here in the toolbar. So here, let's assume that this is set at a 45 degree angle and enter that. And when I press enter, we'll see the area and the perimeter change. So because it's a sloped roof now, the area and the perimeter have been updated to accommodate for the slope of the roof. In addition, if we zoom in, we can see there's an arrow here for the pitch of the roof, and this indicates the direction of the pitch. Now we can grab the handle here on the tip of the arrow and turn the angle of the pitch around. If we hold the shift button, it will automatically snap to the nearest 45 degree angle. You'll notice that by adjusting the angle of the pitch, that the area of the roof does not change. However, the perimeter of the roof will, because this helps indicate which is the long side of the slope. But you'll notice that even on this irregular shape, that the length of each section has been labeled. So this section here is 3750 millimeters, 3214 across the top, 3190, 583, and 7079 across the bottom. So Price of Job has calculated the length of the ridge, the hips, the eaves, 
These are all auto calculated and labeled directly on the image. And that's how to use the area tool in the new takeoff module. Thank you for using Price a Job.